everybody, this is Stuart and Haley with Wine on the Dime and today we're going to celebrate 2019 and usher in 2020 with my wine awards of 2019, so stay tuned. Hey everybody, so before we begin, let's go ahead and pop a little toast to 2019. <laughs> it's over! <laughs> it's over! Yay! <laughs> Remember when that used to be me? I didn't know you were doing <laughs> it. <laughs> All right, so seeing as we already opened the bubbly, let's look at the sparkling wines of the year. Ooh, okay. So I have five candidates here. One is the 2016 A to Z Bubbles Rosé. The other one is bubbles. the 2000 Bubbles. It literally says bubbles on the label. The 2016 W. Donaldson Sonoma Blanc de Blanc. I like that name. Blanc de Blanc. <laughs> or Donaldson. No, Blanc de Blanc. Okay. Uh, the next one is the Penelope Breathless North Coast Sparkling Rosé. And the last one is the 2015 High Meadow Winery Chica Sparkling Wine. That actually made your list? That made my list. I, I quite enjoyed that one. Really? Yes. There's a story behind this one. I'll just tell you that. So, drum roll. My choice for Sparkling Wine of the Year was the Penelope Breathless North Coast Sparkling Rosé from NakedWines.com. Why? I just loved the <laughs> flavor profile of it. I loved, I loved, it had good complexity. It was nice, bright acid. It, I love Sparkling Rosé. I've really True. gotten into those lately and it just nice. felt like it had all the right flavor elements and composure that I was looking for in a sparkling. And wine. all your favorites are going to be linked in show notes and stuff like that. Yes, right? you can okay. find all of you can find all of my my finalists as well as the winners in the video descriptions with links to the videos in case you want to go back and watch them. Which some of them are actually funny. Um, my Thanks. choice. Some of them. Some of them. <laughs> I'm the wife. I can't give them full credit. My favorite sparkling wine was actually on your list, which I didn't think would be on your list, was the High Meadow Winery Chica. Ah, okay. Not because it's the best wine in the world, but it's because it's so unique. It is. It's really That different. one, so I went on a girl's trip, which I never do. A girlfriend of mine, like, rented a limo, and we all went out to the hill country, and man, if you ever do that, it is fun, because you don't have to drive. And we went to tons of wineries, and we ended up at High Meadow. Wasn't a fan of most of their wines. A lot of young stuff, a lot of just not fabulous. But this Chica sparkling wine was like a sparkling citrus. There yes. was lemon notes in it. A lot of lemon. It is the perfect hot August summer day, sit on the back porch, put your feet in a kiddie pool, and drink some mm -hmm. sparkling wine. Yeah, it's and really I, good. I've never had such a lemon forward. I mean, full on lemon citrus forward. Yeah, I mean, you're getting lemon wine. juice, lemon peel. Yeah. Like, it's, it's very, very so, lemony. But that was mine. Mainly, there's a lot of memory yeah, to go with. Yeah, it, no, there was. A, I mean, I I understand that. I, yeah. I mean, can I drink this yet? Go for it. I've been drinking mine. <laughs> so, uh, I I agree. Like one of the things that that I think a lot of people enjoy about wine is it is it sometimes it takes you back to a place, yeah. right? Sometimes it takes you back to a gathering you were having or a really fantastic meal or something like that. So sometimes when those wines are good, but then they also pair well with a memory. Yeah. It, it becomes an outstanding wine. Yeah. So I was I, happy to see that yes. on your list this year. Yes. Surprised I, you thought like, well, you well, weren't too in love with it. Well, and, and so I will admit that when I first tried it, I was kind of like, this, this is a little bit weird, but it very, very quickly grew on me. Like yeah. by the middle of the second glass, I was like, I understand why this is made yep. and I like it. I yep. really do. So I, I can't argue with your pick whatsoever. Hey. All right, so moving on to my next category, which is Rosé Wine of the Year. I had five picks. So one is the 2018 Joyce Turbidity Current Rosé. One is the 2018 Cory Wines Rosé. The 2017 Joel Gott Rosé. The 2018 Petternalis Cellars Over the Moon Rosé. And the 2018 Kim Crawford Rosé. So, my choice for Rosé of the Year was the Petternal Cellars Over the Moon Rosé. It's a Texas Rosé and yeah. I, I'm i over the moon for it. I don't know what to say other than Did that. Did you just put pit that so you could put the, the no, funny little joke no. there? No, so, so, so I really, <laughs> I, one of the reasons why I liked the wine was because it had a very sharp fruit note up front and it kind of gave into this little bit of a creaminess in the finish. And so I had this weird dichotomy on the palate, but then, it was also like 
if I'm trying to remember the exact percentage, but it's like 14.6% ABV. As a rosé? And you can't taste the alcohol. Crazy. Everything is so balanced in that wine that I really enjoyed it. Hmm. What interesting to me, what was the magazine that just came out with like Texas Hill Country, The Secret of the Wine World or something like that? Oh, it was like, like Forbes wrote an article about it, yeah. So more and more people are recognizing how awesome Texas wines are. It's because they are awesome. They are awesome. I've been telling you all for years. Why haven't you figured this out yet? He should be famous by now. Subscribe if you have. <laughs> anyway, so it's not totally out of line that a Texas wine should be in your top or the top. Yeah. Um, yet again, I, I like the fact that my tops are hitting your list of tops, um, which is interesting because I don't drink nearly the variety of wine that he drinks. Can the I, amount, can I guess, totally. Can I totally guess yours? Can I guess it? Will you let me guess it? Yes. Is it Cam Crawford? Totally not. Oh. Totally yes. Oh, okay. I figured yeah. it's from New Zealand. You I love everything obsessed. from New Zealand. <laughs> I know, there's something, I think it's all the Kiwis. Birds. No, um, I don't know what it is. It's just, it's a simple, it's not overly complex. It's just a pretty, good tasting, Rosé. I yeah, just I'm, like it. It's memorable, it, so but not crazy weird. I agree with you. One of the things I really liked about the Kim Crawford was it maintaining a really nice, bright acidity all the way through, and it was very well balanced. I felt like it lacked a little of the intensity that the Over the Moon had. That's why I chose the Over the Moon. I might not have had the Over the Moon. I don't think you did because you weren't with me when I did that trip. There you go. You missed out. That's all good. All right, so the next category is best white wine of the year. And the finalists are the 2016 Syrah, or Cy, yeah, Syrah. Syrah? Albarino, yeah, it's, it's hard to pronounce. Sure. Albarino from Rymont Family Vineyards. The French Connection Winery La Connection White Rhone Blend. The 2016 Smith Story Riesling. The 2017 Castello Banfi Princesa Gavia Gavi. Principessa. Prince, well, I can't speak. <laughs> I can hardly speak English. Give so me a break true. here. And the 2017 Benjamin Darnot La Cote Dore Pie Doc from Ch or Chardonnay. So and that one's from Naked Wines. So before you go, because you've done the first two. Okay. I disagree with all of yours. Cause my Okay, so so before they forget what I've done, let me give my answer real fast and then you can give okay. yours. So my favorite white is the French connection. La Connection Rhone White Blend. It's amazing. You've had it. No, he is. It's it's amazing. It's amazing. That doesn't mean I agree with any of yours. <sighs> okay, so what what would yours then be then? Of all the whites I tried in 2019, the best white of the year, any New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc. <laughs> None of which made your list. No, but you know what? It's from New Zealand. So <laughs> it's, it's the, I literally, I don't have anything written down in this the category. Most, it's the it's most just, important grape in New Zealand, especially Marlboro, which is the only white wine you like to drink. It's right? great. Um, but uh -huh. I will say he is correct. Of those five, the French Connection White Rhone Blend is the best. It's I was phenomenal. out there. It's phenomenal. Best winery in the Hill Country right now is the French Connection. All their wines are great. Their food, the charcuterie platter alone is phenomenal. We played beanbag toss. You gotta love that. Um, but no, you're wrong. But of those five, that's the best, yes. <laughs> so I'm right, but yet I'm wrong. Yes, that's you're a man. You're okay. <sighs> My Tinder profile will be coming up soon. That's why he left. Thanks. Okay, so now my first, I, I don't know why, I, I have like a, a moment I like shot for in from this one, because I'm going into the worst white wine of the year. And it I take pleasure in giving this award because I taste a lot of wines and there are some that are like, uh, and then there are some where it's like, Whoa, and I, I like this is the most Whoa, one that I I could I had I've had all in 2019. 2018 was hands down the Chaco vine oh, pumpkin God. spice. It was the worst thing. It may be the worst thing I've ever had in my life. This was not as bad as the Chaco vine. I will was say that. Did we do the pumpkin Chaco vine? We did the pumpkin spice. Chaco. It was that was worse. It was atrocious. That was, was worse than Chaco vine. Horrible. It was horrible. Oh, the both the anyway, great videos. Anyway, um, let's get to my finalist for the worst white wine of the year. Uh, number one is the 2017 Robert Mondavi Woodbridge oh, Pinot Grigio. <laughs> which ah, anything Woodbridge is so bad. I, I received for free, so that was that was the only good thing about it. Uh, number two is the Nine Hats Riesling. 
both vintages I tried in that video. Uh, 2017 is the Rich and Creamy Chardonnay. Yeah. <laughs> Rich and Creamy. <laughs> number, <laughs> number four is the 2016 Creos Torrantes. And number five is the 2017 Charles Shaw Three Buck Chuck Trader Joe's Sauvignon mm -hmm. Blanc. So, my pick for worst white wine of the year is the 2017 Rich and Creamy Chardonnay. Oh, wrong again. Go ahead, tell them why. It was atrocious. <laughs> it was. That's it was descriptive. I mean, no, I mean, honestly, I, I would use it to clean a bathtub because I, I feel like that's the only good use for it because then it goes down a drain after the dirt makes it richer. It was a <laughs> horrible, horrible wine. I would never wish that upon my worst. I would use that on my worst enemies. There you go. It's just not good. <laughs> just don't. Just don't have it. It's 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 not worth. It's not worth it. So my worst wine of the year hit that list, but it was the Nine Hats, and I remember that one because you hate Riesling. <laughs> I hate Riesling, but this one, the video is actually kind of fascinating because it's a what a vertical tasting. It's a vertical tasting where you've got two of the exact same wine but different vintages, different years. And so he walked us through how do you test and taste for different years of the same wine. So the the video was cool. I remember at one point my my dad used to own a, a garage, like a auto body shop, and he would wear these like overall things and he'd come home smelling like grease and petroleum and car gunk. And I took one sip of that and just got hit with the memory of my dad's <laughs> car gunk overalls and going, why did anyone put this in a wine? <laughs> it was horrible. So watch the video for the vertical tasting and to know you should avoid that wine like the plague. I don't know if you can even find them at this point. <laughs> I got some crazy clearance deals on them. <laughs> they might have been trying to keep clear about. I'm not kidding. I got like so both bad. wines for a total of like seven bucks or something like that. So, so it was like it was like it. one was seven bucks, the next one was a dollar, and they just had multiple vintages. So I was like, oh, I'm doing a vertical tasting video. That was not what I expected from a vertical tasting video, but at least it highlighted the point of the vertical tasting because you did yeah. taste differences between it was, the years. It was weird so, that yeah, they the were so different. Yeah, the gave some different things, but... Um, but just one they, had they worse patrolling. They sucked. Oh, it was bad. <laughs> they were not bad. good. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was not fun. Okay, so now we're getting into best red wine of the year, which is, I know, something you're looking forward to because you yeah. really love red wine. I do. So, the first one... body is the 2015 Cuvant de Jacobin Pinot Noir. He tries. Yeah, uh, I, I can't do like the guttural French thing. <laughs> Second one is the 20, 2013 Martetti Winery Sangiovese. Next is the 2017 Scott Kelly Oregon Pinot Noir. Next one is the 2015 Louis Latour Domaine de Valmassine Pinot Noir. And the last one is the 2016 Castle Rock Pinot Noir, which I instantly disqualify now. Instantly disqualified. Why? Because I've already reviewed it in the past. <gasps> I was revisiting it. I still love it. I still uh, love that wine. But I, I can't qualify I will buy it on a regular, But I've already, it's not new to review, so it's instantly disqualified. So my choice is going to be the 2013 Martetti Winery Sangiovese, which was a gift from the unknown wine caster. Ah. Uh beautiful. It, it was beautiful. It was fantastic. <laughs> and you were gone on a trip. Thanks. Because I drank it during my birthday and you were gone on my birthday. Hey, this year I'm missing both of ours. <laughs> but that's really, really great wine. <laughs> so thank you, unknown wine caster. Uh, and that really was hands down the best red all year. I, I still think of it. At night. Uh, when I'm alone. Which is often. Yes. <laughs> So my favorite red of the year did not hit that list again at all. The reason being, he gave me this humongous spreadsheet of all the wines he reviewed in 2019. And oh my gosh, how do we still have livers? And I could remember one <laughs> of the reds by name. <laughs> I don't catalog things in my head she like he does. She just drinks, she just drinks. That's so funny. for me, the most memorable obviously of the year <laughs> Was the 2016 Joel got 815 Cabernet Sauvignon? Yes, uh, that's a that's it's a, a solid very solid decent pick. wine. Yes, it's a solid value pick. I just don't remember their names. I'm sure those are wonderful. I, they are, especially the Martetti. You should have been here to drink mm -hmm. it. <laughs>
<laughs> Whatever. <laughs> okay, so going into worst red wine of the year, and like I said, I get, I get so much pleasure in this picture. <laughs> I don't know why I'm an evil person. Uh, first is the 2016 Rufino Chianti Superiore. The 2015 20 Rose Pinot Noir. Okay. The 2016 Cupcake Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> The 2016 Blackstone Merlot and the 2015 mm. The Show Cabernet Sauvignon. This was a really hard one to figure Those out. Those are all this really close. This was really hard. Extraordinarily hard. And it, it was between, in the end, it was really, be, it was a knife's edge between two. Okay. And the two were the 20 Rose Pinot Noir and the Blackstone Merlot. Okay. And I went with the Blackstone Merlot. The 20 rose was just unpalatable, but the Blackstone not only sucks, it's everywhere. <laughs> yes, it is. It really is. It's not the good. Wines like Blackstone are why I'm afraid to buy wines I don't know already. Wines like Blackstone are why you should be afraid to buy certain wines. <laughs> because they're so prevalent. They are everywhere. That's how I feel about Cupcake. It's like they're everywhere. But in order you know not they to, have be to be afraid, terrible. Subscribe to Wine on the Dime. So go ahead and click that subscribe button right here and click that notifications yep. bell so you can be notified when future videos are posted. So I would put my worst between Blackstone and Cupcake. Just because okay, I hate cupcake all Cupcakes. Cupcake was bad. So, so Cupcake They're was- They're all bad. The Cupcake review, it was bad. It was so bad that I was tasting it while I was setting up. And I decided I was just going to pour the bottle out and the opening to the video was going to be me giving like 15 seconds of why it sucks so bad, and then I was going to review another wine, and I did. <laughs> See, so so don't ever buy cupcake wine. So so it was not good, but it didn't leave the memory that the other <laughs> two did. It was horrible. Oh gosh, oh, awesome. it was it was really bad. So uh, yeah, so 2016 Blackstone Merlot. You get worst red wine of the year. Congratulations. Okay, so going into best value wine of the year. Okay. So this was a wine where I looked at everything. I looked at the quality, the potential. If you wanted to keep it for a little while, it might it might actually develop a little bit. The price, what you were getting at the price right now if you wanted to open it. So I looked at a whole bunch of different factors. And really when it came down to it, I had only one wine. Okay. And I used to, in the past, say it was Cassie or Diablo Cabernet Sauvignon. Mm. That's out the door. I kicked that thing out the door that so hard. Bad. It got bad. That used to be our go-to. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's not good now. Oh, it's not good. Man. Um, as a matter of is fact. Is Royal Majesty? No. Really? No. Which is Rex Goliath, by the way. We no. call it His Royal Majesty. Yeah. So, the best value wine of the year is the 2017 Trevento Reserve Cabernet Malbec Argentinian Blend. It goes for about $10 here in San Antonio, and it is phenomenal. For 10 bucks? I would, yeah. say, I would say right below that, literally right below that, is the Santa Julia Red Blend. Mm. And that is really good value, too. It's a few dollars more, which is why I didn't win. Okay. But those two okay. those two good wines are really, really solid picks. The Trevento you've actually had yeah. quite often. Yeah. And yeah, I haven't heard you complain about it. So I don't complain about much. Must be pretty good. All right, so going on to another shot in Freudian category. The biggest disappointment oh. of the year. The biggest disappointment wine of the year. This is this is a wine that I had, and I had so much hype on in my own head. I was so ready for this wine. Why? And, well, I had worked really hard for it. So, so you'll, you'll, you'll see here in a second. Okay. But this was He's a wine- He's obviously built up a story. I had, let me tell the story. This was a wine that I had in my mind, like, this is one of those that I want to get. As soon as I pass my W set level three, I want to treat myself for gotcha. it. And I had it. It 100% justified the reason why I have this channel. <laughs> so my biggest disappointment of the year is the 2014 Don Melchior Cabernet Sauvignon costing $90 oh, a bottle. Oh, gut punch. Which was better, that or the Treventa? The Treventa. Oh, <laughs> ninety dollars. Well, Ten dollars. Actually, let me let me let me let me rephrase that. For the price, the Treventa. The Don Malcure was still a very good wine. It was not 
something that that was worth the 90 bucks. If you had, if you'd priced at 35, I would have been over the moon for it. I would have been. Okay, I might so have it's been, not that uh, it was a bad wine; it's that it was, it was a disappointment for the value. Yes. Okay. At ninety dollars, I expected something to knock my socks off, and I tasted this, and I was like, "I can get a bottle of Educated Guess and probably mix it with a little something else." And well, it's like get, the, I mean, like the I was, one we reviewed that was like a two hundred and fifty dollar yeah bottle that was gifted. We don't buy it, but gift us more, and it was like nothing special. It was kind of actually a letdown. Uh, I got a little bit more out of it than you I did. I didn't. It but, was some funky, dusty but, stuff. But I don't. I don't see why mm -mm. I should be paying that much for the like. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm not getting that much of a difference between something that's that level. Now it could be just be that the expensive wines that we have have been duds. That could be an option. And we do not but try them often. The Don Melchior on purpose. The Don Melchior is a really like very highly rated wine overall. And it was a bit of a disappointment. So. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, we got some fun categories. So, that. yes. So, uh, the next category is uh, most viewed video of the year. And, so, uh, kind of like a viewer's choice almost. Yeah, it's not like a little bit of a viewer's choice. Um, which, ironically, was not any wine review. <laughs> so, it was actually my W set how to study for. The W set level three video, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah. So, so what it means to me is that you guys were looking for some of that content, some advice, which I, I thank you for for coming to that series. I really enjoyed making that that vlogging series, and there might be a little bit more of something in the future coming. Maybe we'll see. She doesn't want me to take the diploma. But if this video gets enough likes, I will sign up for the diploma. I'm just if this saying. video gets enough donations. However, though, if I'm looking at wine reviews, my most viewed wine review is actually the Decoy Cabernet Sauvignon. Really? Yeah. So it's a very huh. it's a very popular wine. It's a very solid wine, especially for around if you can find it like I think I pay like 18 bucks for it. Uh, okay, it so it's on the higher eight, end of what normally, we do. Yeah, it normally goes between 18 and 20 ish I've seen it for around there, but uh, it's it's not a bad one. All right, so now for my most searched content of okay. the year, um, it's W set level three. <laughs> Anything W set level three? <laughs> you guys really like this whole W set level three stuff. Um, so are there other YouTubers out there doing stuff on the level three? I I haven't seen them now. I don't know all of YouTube. There's like 185 million. There's that YouTube channel. So I, I don't know. I don't know everyone out there. Um, but like I said, there might be more W set stuff coming in 2020. So stay tuned, especially maybe for an announcement, like right after the beginning of the year. Because once the divorce goes through, we're you know, he's golden. I'll have so much time. Yeah. I'll be broke, but I'll have yeah. so much time. The next actual search term after that was Cassio Del Diablo, which is funny because really? we just had a bunch of a disappointment. It's been. Hopefully, if you got vintages yeah. from like 2015, they were good. Yeah, yeah. Then I don't know how they'd be now. I don't. They but they might not be much. I don't know how they age, they, but yeah. the ones now just don't skip it. I don't. I don't think they're really made to age, to be quite honest. They're not made to drink now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now going on to my most watched playlist. Uh, what do you think it's about? I'm gonna guess based on your most viewed and your most searched. Your W set level three? You'd be right. You'd be right. It's 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 my W set journey playlist. Which oh. actually are really cool because you get to see a lot of the Texas Hill Country. He plays with a donkey. I get to touch some ass in those videos. Donkey. Um, gorgeous routes to the Hill Country. Like if you like trees, go watch them. Um, Fredericksburg's kind of awesome. Yeah. Uh, overall, I eat Ruladen. Ah, that's a good one. Roulotta is fantastic, yeah. especially with sauerkraut. Oh, so good. <laughs> so good. So that's my number one rated playlist for the year. And uh, I really thank you guys, because that was one of those where I was going back and forth, whether or not I should even do it. Yeah. I actually had to reach out to WSET Global in London and talk to their PR department in order to get approval to even cover any content. And we went back and forth for a while about what I could and could not cover. And um, in the end, I felt like I... I I covered the best I could with not being able to show you 
any of the material. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but which was the problem. They wouldn't let me show any classroom lectures. They wouldn't let me show me any of the things going on. I could show you sort of like what we tasted and kind of how we did it, but I couldn't give you the no real content. inside scoop. They no wouldn't content. let me do it. So for those of you who stuck around and watched those videos, I really appreciate it. If you haven't seen this series, I encourage you to do Go it, especially look. if you're interested in getting those certifications. I also have a WSET level two, which is blended in with that. And have a goal of having the WSET level three stuff be his top rated stuff for next year. Or the diploma playlist. No. Maybe the diploma no. playlist? No. Okay, well, well, we'll move on to the next category. Yes. All right, so last shot in Ford and category. Okay, here we go. Overall worst wine of the year. <laughs> and what I basically did was I took the two worst wines that I could think of and put them neck and neck with each other. So it's the 2017 Rich and Creamy Chardonnay and the 2016 Blackstone Merlot. Guess which one I chose? I think it should be the Rich and Creamy just for the name. Just for the name. It's awful. Rich. <laughs> and creamy. Yes, but is it moist? It's so moist. <laughs> Uh, you're you're right. <laughs> it's, rich, it's the rich and creamy oh God. Chardonnay. <laughs> and it's a Chardonnay. Ugh. Don't pet me. <laughs> yeah, it's the rich and creamy Chardonnay. Uh, it was it was atrocious to the point where I'm saying that is my worst wine I reviewed in 2019. Cool. It's <laughs> Ah, okay. All right, so now for my overall best wine of the year. Okay. So this is like the best picture. This award. is this is best picture, best director, best actress, best actor, best special effects, best everything rolled into a single category. Okay. This is actually more prestigious than the Oscars. Have you, have you not noticed? I'm, I'm dressed up for y'all. I'm dressed up. So, the overall best wine of the year. The four, the four options are the 2017 Trevento Reserve Cabernet Malbec Argentinian Blend. Okay. Because it's my best value pick. Okay. The 2013 Martetti Winery Sangiovese. The 2018 Pedernal Cellars Over the Moon Rosé. And the French Connection, La Connection White Rhone Blend. So I remember none of those. So I'm trying to th think of what, you know, even really hot on the French Connection lately, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say that you're picking the French Connection. That is the semi-finalist. Ah, I got close! Was, the French the, the okay. French Connection, La Connection, White Rhone Blend is my second favorite wine mm. of the year. Okay. The first is the 2013 Martetti Winery Sangiovese. And why? Because you don't understand <laughs> how fantastic that wine was. <laughs> I'm talking about like, this was a wine where like, I, I drank that one bottle because I was, I was home alone. I drank that one bottle on my birthday alone. And I sipped it for like six hours. And I was just like enthralled with it the entire time. It was such an amazing wine. It was such a you great wine. You should just leave town on your birthday more often. You should, why don't you do it this year? Oh, done. Oh, okay. <laughs> She's already leaving anyway. I am. Yeah. <laughs> it's okay. I'll just hang out with other folks. And wine. Strippers. Yeah. All right, so anyway. Oh, you know what? What? Surprise category. I just thought of this right now. Ah, crap. Texas Winery of the Year. Ooh, I already said it. What do you think? French Connection. Yeah, it's gonna be French Connection. So so some of the other wineries that I would, I would put up there are uh, Sigmore Vineyards. Uh, I would put up Ab Asteris up there. Longhorn Cellars, Ron Yates. Uh, but, what's the one next to Ron Yates? Vinovium. Okay. Vinovium is actually really good. I, the thing I like about Vinovium is it's wine on tap, and once a month they have a prime rib dinner and trivia night. That's yes. pretty cool. Which apparently we joined a trivia team. <laughs> Which is funny. Yeah. <laughs> He's the wine guy now. <laughs> Because part of the, one of the categories, like one of the eight categories, is wine trivia, and apparently it's picked like every other question. So, um, yeah. but no, they have a really fun atmosphere. I, I like their selection, and the prime rib was actually really good. It was really good. But it's no, really I'd really go good. with French Connection for the top. Yeah, yeah, French Connection is my favorite winery of this year. I would say last year, 
I would I would probably put oh it'd be a hard choice between Lewis Wines and Ron Yates. Ooh, Lewis Wines is pretty good. There's their swim spot is one of the best tubing wines out there. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So um, basically there's a lot of good wine and wineries in the Hill Country. Yeah. Get over to 290, like ASAP. Yeah. Yeah. Ambiance. Between French Connection and Wine Castle. There's so many good options. <laughs> I could go on. I could go on for, for so long. Um, but I'm not going to because at some point this video actually has to end. Anyway, so that is all of the categories we had. And I really hope that you enjoyed today's video. Um, I really, really want to thank you for all the channel growth this year. Y'all may not realize it, but in terms of viewership, in terms of subscribers, in terms of time watched, I have literally at least doubled all of those metrics. And it's because you have chosen to actually come and watch videos, you've come to talk, you ask questions, you engage with me, and I have a ton of great stuff that's coming in 2020. So this isn't to 2020, but this is to you. Thank you so much for everything you've done in helping me grow wine on the dime and really get out the word for these great, or sometimes really <laughs> shitty value wines yes. that are $15 and under, and also some of these really cool places that are in the Texas Hill Country. I really appreciate it, and I can't do it without your support. So continue to watch the videos, share with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you feel so inclined, click that notifications bell if you can be bothered. And like I said, I really, really do appreciate it. And she does too, because it prevents me from bugging her at night when she's trying to watch TV. Anyway, this is Stuart and Haley with Wine on the Dime. If you liked today's best of 2019 video, like I said before many times in this video, click the subscribe button and click that notifications bell. Maybe like it and leave a comment and let me know what other types of things you want to see in 2020. And as I've mentioned a few times as well, I have some new stuff coming up, coming up in 2020. In all his spare time. In all my spare time. She, she's gone a lot. <laughs> yeah. The kids go to bed early. It's fantastic. I have nights to do whatever. but. Stick around and let me know what you'd like to see and I will do my best to accommodate it. And once again, here's to you, here's to 2020. Cheers and be responsible. Always. And I'll see you in the next year, in the next decade. Holy oh, crap, it's the next <laughs> decade. I need a drink. I'll see y'all later. I didn't get your system apparently. I'm sorry, my wife failed. Oh, oh, oh. oh man, he's recording. Yes! <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I just popped my back nine times doing this. You're old. Yes. What? I thought this was for New Year's. I didn't realize it was for the wine no, awards. No, it was for the wine awards. <laughs> I'm totally gonna wear it for New Year's. Too. Yes. <laughs> Stay tuned for bloopers. Oh crap. Can you Take stop that? being that guy? Can you drink the... We're gonna have to chug this on a bitch. <laughs> Does it champagne flute? You're gonna have such burps. Reverse pressure. <laughs> bloopers, bloopers, bloopers. It works. Oh, <laughs> You're better at it. You do. I, I'm no, no, no. Not let you. That totally worked. Hey, wine tips. <laughs> Why? Not? This sums up 2019 in so many ways. That was recorded, by the way. Oh, crap. All right, so now for my most, most, oh, I was trying to say that. Merst. As you coat my hand in wine. <laughs> Thanks, I didn't want to have to wash this shirt. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> You're Episcopal. Three, two.